Good morning, my friends. My name is Rabbit, and thank you so much for joining me for episode number eight of Let's Play Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth. So as I noted towards the end of our previous episode, I did decide to spend a bit of time making my way through the Tower of Trials. I will show you exactly what point we had kind of left off. Well, I guess I can't show you exactly since it only brings you back in increments of five, but I was able to go beyond floor 10. I think I got to floor 14, actually. I probably should have just gone on to take on floor number 15, but I really wasn't feeling it. So I, I backed out a little bit early, but that is okay because I got plenty of things and there are a few little changes that I do want to share with you very quickly on camera before we do anything else. So let's hop on down to the organize menu. And I think the status screen is going to be the easiest one to sort of summarize everything. So do bear with me. I have a couple little notes here of the major changes I wanted to share, but obviously if you see something else, then you know it's different. So starting off with levels, as you can see, I was able to get quite a few people up and we are missing some party members. So I was able to confirm, actually, let me start with this. I was able to confirm that if all of your party members are at a specific increment of five, then the recruitment center will reflect that. So as you can see, everyone here is now level five because everyone in my party is between level five and level eight. So what that meant though, was in order for me to kind of test this out, I did have to let go of Aisha and I let go of Trish. And you know, initially I was thinking, oh, okay, fine. I'll go ahead and reset now that I was able to check and confirm without them in my party, but I decided, you know what, whatever, it's not a big deal. I've got some new folks and I'd say so far they're, they're holding their own. So just for the sake of showing you guys that if you're having a little bit of trouble leveling all of your party members up because it can take a fucking long time and Again, ain't nobody got time for running through the Tower of Trial over and over and over again. Although, I would highly recommend you try to get as far as you can just for the seals, as well as some of the armor that you can get as drops or coins that you can get as drops if you do string together an attack session successfully. But, you know, if you're just trying to steamroll your way through the game, then I get it. What's probably going to be better for you is just to have a smaller crew and then as soon as you know, some of them hit level five, then going ahead and pulling from the recruitment center. It's just gonna save you a lot more time in the long run than having some stragglers always in your party that you're never using and they're like level three and it's just going to be limiting what you can gain access to. So really wanted to highlight that and oops, did not mean to back out, meant to come on back to the status menu where we had left off a couple minutes ago. So back to what I was saying, levels, everyone is between level five and level eight. I actually think, Everyone is uh, between level seven and eight. So we're pretty close to level 10, at least on a few folks, which is nice. This may seem like a bit of overkill, especially for the next confrontation that we're going to have fairly soon. But I kind of have noted this and if you didn't get the hint, I'm gonna tell you right now. This game can be a little bit unfair with regards to some of the battles that you're going to undertake. So I would highly recommend not necessarily over leveling and spending like 20 hours getting everyone to level like 20, you know, but you're gonna wanna have a bit of an advantage over the NPCs because the game is going to exploit any weaknesses you might have in your party, and it's gonna make you rage. So there's my warning. That is why I opted to spend a little bit of time just getting them levels, because for me, I think it's just gonna make things easier in the long run, as long as I keep it up anyway. You can definitely fall behind fairly quickly. So okay, looking at what we have, I, I'm not sure if the skills, they, the skills should be new, the physical damage, I don't think you guys saw. I also was able to get a leather armor drop from stringing together an attack session on like floor 11, maybe floor 12 of the Cave of Trial. And as you can see from Faz's coin over here, that was previously Grula. I was able to level it up by doing some crazy seal combinations. Now. It is a complicated process and I don't wanna spend forever trying to talk to you guys about how to engrave. I don't even feel like I'm well versed enough in it to give you an adequate tutorial, but all you need to know is certain seals combine that can level up your coin depending on its stats. So just for level one, let's take a quick second to look at Greece. As you can see from the stats, it's got 40 uh, MCP and 42 
um, potency. So I keep wanting to call it pot, but you know, it, it would work, right? It would work. So the thing about this is in order to level up a lot of the elemental coins to level two from level one, I believe they need to have at least 30 MCP and then 30 potency. So you're going to need to figure out how you can quickly and effortlessly raise those two stats in particular um, and which seals are going to be appropriate for that. And then once you've gotten them there, there are different combinations or different special seals you can get that can either force your coin to level up or depending on if you have sort of reached that point where you have the 30-30 and MCP and potency respectively, it'll go ahead and level up to level two. So that's where Grease came from. There are a few of them that I was able to change. So while we're in this menu, maybe this will be faster and easier. So we were able to get that up for Faz. Let's see, I don't think any major changes happened to these, okay. Few changes here, <laughs> I'm sure you can see. I was able to get Cure to its level two form, so you can see its stats above. Not gonna spend forever trying to talk about everything, but level two, it's looking great. I'm thinking about bringing up its AoE, but not quite yet. It will reduce the potency, and I think we're fine to not have an AoE heal. Was able to get this up to level two as well. It is now Gaze, or Gaze, however you wanna say it. And same thing for Zell is now level two called Zephyrd. And Blisu is still basic. As soon as I can get the potency up to level 30 or to 30 points, maybe I'll keep you guys on camera for that. It's, it is a fucking process you guys and you have to sort of know like which seals go into what. I'm sure there are guides online, maybe not many just because this game is so obscure, but you know. If you're willing to set aside the time, you can probably figure it out on your own. And then the last one I believe that I leveled up was Happy's Spell or Happy's Coin. It is now Lakel or Lykel. And I'm pretty sure, yep, that was the last one for the level two changes. So all that's left really is to just show you guys equipment and what everyone's got going on for skill. So bing, bang, boom, moving on. We've got Charm 10%. I don't think you guys saw that. It's a nice little new upgrade for him. And he's about to get another point of devotion. So that's a little aggravating. We've got a Longbow on Krista. Was a drop that I got. Plus, I don't think you saw the physical hit plus 10. Meta Leaves had a few changes. I think the Absorb 10% and the Coin Find Damage minus 10%. Both are new to you guys. Meredith is a new recruit, and you can see what she's got going on. She was formerly a worshiper of Gote, but I switched her to Sonova. Probably gonna change that. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. Aunt Irma is also new. Formerly a worshiper of Zenith, but now I switched it up to Gote. And she did get a drop, a ball, and chain. And then here's Happy. Jump plus one is new. All right, that's it, friends. Those are all the changes that have happened without you. So without further ado, let's go ahead past Satan Hills. We want to come up here. Gosh, I'm trying to like not just zip across the map, but it looks like there's no other way to get around it. So Tower of Wind. Everyone should be set up and ready. So let's see what awaits us. We did let those two douchebags get away, so I'm sure there's going to be trouble here for us. There's no way around it. Ooh, a new character. We have come in the name of Fernandez, Emperor of Valaim. Surrender the tower to us now or you will suffer the consequences. Ooh, Silphados responds, well, you have obviously not come in peace, but it is my duty as the priest of Kashis to guard this tower. If you want to take this tower, you will have to deal with me first. How dare you? He's all by himself, take him. Or is he by himself? Hold it right there. Cue the hero type. We'll take you on. Damn right we will. So as was predicted, we do have a fight immediately after Satan Hills. So again, I tried to drop some hints, y'all. You're gonna need to spend time leveling up your team. Rescue Silphatos. We got it, I think we can handle it. So as for the grindiness of this game, yeah, it 
it can be a bit much at times, but you should be fine. So as you can see, there's some douchebags hiding out over here, but they're level two. So we're a bit overpowered for this fight. I think level three will be the max, and it might just be this wizard bitch. And no, she's level two also. Huh. Okay, well, never mind. Everyone's level two, so I think we can take them out pretty quickly. Sulfados is level four, so even my little shitty recruits are stronger than he is. Maybe, you know, I didn't need to get that far over level five, but it happens. Okay, cut me some slack. So I'm gonna... Oh, there's a douchebag over here that I didn't even notice. I'm going to put... Krista up here. I don't want Metaliv to get his ass whooped, so I'm gonna... Where do I want to set you? I might set him by... Lime Ray. Meredith should be fine on this side. She might die, though. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I, uh, I haven't been really into her. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of Irma for Happy just to get that extra bit of range. And I might eventually give Irma also a bow and arrow, but you know, using the Morning Star has been fine. So as you can see, our max is capped because Sulfados is in this fight as well. So we're going into it with six of our own teammates and then taking one of the, I guess he's an NPC for now, but I'm sure you can probably predict. All right, I'm gonna hide like a bitch. Well, or do I wanna move? I'll just move one over here. This guy has a dagger. Uh, not too worried about it. And then this one has an axe. Let's just go all out then. See who we can kill. See how fast we can do it. Yeah, you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna murder everybody in here. What? I'm telling you, this is a far better feeling than getting your ass kicked, which I'm sure we're gonna run into that eventually. There's really not going to be a way around it. So I'm going to move... God damn it, Faz. I'm going to move him down a little bit. I should have put him probably then where Lime Ray was. And... I don't know... Can I reach... I might want to wait, though, because I have a range on that. So I'm going to leave it like this. Faz will get a turn a little bit earlier. Just because I didn't use that much of his wrap. We'll go ahead and throw, so I almost called him Sulfados. We'll go ahead and throw Lime Ray up front and center. And I guess I'll have Krista focus these ass. So, oh my gosh, I am so sorry, girlfriend. Usually the bow goes up a little bit, but I guess this is a hill and technically we're at a bit of a slope. So, you know, my mistake. <laughs> Make sure you're paying attention and not killing your team. That's, that's going to see you pretty far if you do that. So same situation here. I'm thinking I don't have any range. The AOE, I think, is one for everything that Metalave's got going on. But I should be able to one-shot kill these assholes. I'm not even going to worry about trying to string together attack sessions. They're not going to have that great of stuff on them. I mean, I guess we could always check it out, but... I'm not too concerned about it. I think getting through this fight will be nice and easy. And hey, we can see Sylphados and check out what he's got. So he's got Zell and Cure. His Cure coin is nice and probably in the position to be leveled up, actually. But, so he's got a Ceramic Knife, Physical Evade plus 10%. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's not super good just because, you know, I've already gotten my team a little overpowered for this battle. But hey, whatever. So that's pretty nice. I'll do my best to get him kind of up to speed. So Fados, you're going to need to defend. At least until I can get my party in there. And we might be able to... Oh, we're going to enter the penalty. But it's okay, because we got the kill. And at the end of the day, uh, we'll face this way. So this dude is salty. Not sure how you lived, but it works for me. Oh, man. They are not happy campers. So 
So we want to try to get as many people to this other side as possible so Sulfados doesn't die. That's not going to be good. But fortunately, as a Prius, it looks like he's got fairly high magic resistance. But I still don't want to risk it and have him die. So we got to get over here ASAP. I've got tons of heals. Almost everyone on my team. I think Meredith is the only one that doesn't have one. So pretty much everyone else is rocking something. And I actually think she'll be fine. So I might start migrating everyone else to the other side of the bridge. Oh my god, you guys, stop. The advancement is real. Don't know about fighting on this bridge. It's an easy way to have everybody die. One wrong move and swing of the blade and it's kind of game over. I guess alternatively, I can move Sulfados closer to us. We'll see. If I feel like he's getting dogpiled a little bit, then that might be the plan. But I, I think he should be fine. I'm trying not to get too worried about it. Like, our levels are so high, you guys. This is truly going to just be one of those. Let's blast through it. I could just kill both of these assholes. I think I can anyway. Yes, and that won't touch Lime Ray. So these two guys are definitely going to die. And you get to see one of our level 2 coins. So Grease versus Grula. It definitely scales up the animation there for you. And two for one, baby. And now I'm just going to move Faz as much as I can forward. And I think I will take my own advice and just move Sylphados out of here. He can kind of chillax. Perfect. It's pretty much a wrap, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> there's, there's not much they can really do about this. So again, I guess coming back to what I was sort of sharing with you guys about my strong recommendation to get your levels, do what you need to do. Uh, levels 7 and 8 necessary? Probably not for this. But again, it's going to give you that advantage going forward into other fights that aren't going to be as easy or pleasant. And I'm telling you, there are going to be a lot of them. So we should be happy to have moments of peace. We'll go ahead and get Lime Ray in there. And we'll see what they've got in store. I think having the AOE is so nice. So I do have one more seal. I think it's called the Tice Emblem. And I believe, if I can recall correctly from when I was messing around with this, I believe it raises your AoE by one just automatically. And it doesn't affect anything else. So maybe that's one that I can show you guys. I didn't want to use it on the cure because I didn't think an AoE cure was as necessary right now. But it is something for me to think about. I'm not sure why she did that in two movements, but okay. And it doesn't matter what we do with Meredith. She's going to be chilling. Yeah, nice try. They're so scared, y'all. Now, if I had thought about it, I could have saved Grease so that I could have... The AOE go over multiple people now that they're kind of gathered together. But it's okay. It did what it needed to do. I can cast Zell again. Let's see if we can kill this asshole. And I should technically be paying attention to what elements they are or who it is that they're worshipping. But it's fine. And I'm going to move Sylphados back some more. Don't really want him up at the front. And normally I'd be a little bit more calculative in what I'm casting, what I'm doing, but I think we're at the point where we truly can just go through the motions. And thinking about it, I think this is kind of an aside and has nothing to do with anything, but Metalave, I think, is the only OG mercenary that we started with. I think everyone else I've released. But there is Zephyr. It's like a little tornado. Very cool. And a level for him, so you can't beat that. 
I'm ready for Lime Ray to get that devotion up. Mills. He tried, though. He did. You gotta give him credit. God, they're all on the other side of this fucking bridge. Lucky for them. Okay, so what I want to try to do... I'll just leave the douchebag who's injured. He'll be fine. We'll take him out in due time. And there we go. There's devotion up for Lime Ray, so we will make sure we hit up the temple before entering any other fights. And there's his level. Excellent. So level eight for him. I don't know why they even are trying. I feel like if I was in the shoes of all these soldiers, I would definitely be throwing myself into the river and trying to swim away because what else are they gonna do? They should know. But hey, if they wanna feed me XP, that's okay with me. Let's see what she's got. Nothing. Nothing at all. And I promise you guys with this music, because trust me, as someone who has spent woo, a, a few hours in the Tower of Trials, I gotta tell ya, the music can get old. I'm not sure who thought it was a good idea to have a track that just loops over and over and over again that's not catchy and it's not even like the beat lasts a long time. <sighs> Major boss fights or major confrontations will have better music. I would say it's one of my greatest criticisms of this game is that the music's kind of bad. Or it's not that it's bad, but I think that they didn't do a good job with creating longer tracks. And in an RPG that is heavily strategical or heavily tactical and fights are going to last anywhere from 10 to maybe 30 minutes, I feel like... Oh my gosh, what an oversight to have like a 10 second beat that just loops over and over again for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Like why? I don't understand. I really don't understand why anybody thought that would be a good idea. But you know, I guess they just figured you'd be so into planning what you're going to be doing and who's casting what that you wouldn't pay attention to the music. But I think at least they should have switched things up in the Tower of Trial. Because that's where I think it starts to get old, is when you're going through all of these fucking floors and you're feeling that pressure to just keep going because it only saves in increments of five. Which I didn't show you, by the way, that I did get past at least the point of floor 10, but it's fine. You guys can trust me. I mean, look at my levels. I didn't get these by hanging out on floor two. So I'll make sure that I show you that at some point. I'm sure we'll be going through it again together anyway. At least a floor or two when we have time. Just to see what we can get. Ooh, I think it's going to be worth it to just throw him into the penalty area. We'll just take care of this guy. And yes, we confused him right after he died. Lime Ray, how could you? He's confused about how this was his fate. How could this have happened? Okay, can we please get everyone over on the same side? That'd be great. Like, I don't even think they have anything else they can cast. Well, we could now start stringing together some attack session stuff to see if we can steal anything. I mean, I guess if I want to see... I guess I can do it, and that should be fine. Just to see if we can get anything off, why don't we go ahead and move... Oh, but this bitch is in the way. <sighs> Whatever, it's okay. We'll go ahead and stand in session. Just to show you guys how this can work, if you really feel so compelled. And this isn't the best because, hmm... Unless I can put someone here... And I don't think I can. Well, maybe I can. So then Sylphados can come here. This is why I personally don't like the attack session feature. I think it's a little annoying. 
So I'm gonna hold off. Let me move one. And then I'm going to chill so that I can put Happy where she needs to be, which is right here. Oh my god, but Lime Ray's in the way. You know what? Whatever. It's fine. I just now noticed that because I put him in the penalty, he's going to be chilling there for a while. So Sophedos' position is not the best, but it's whatever. All right, shall we? We go into shoot mode by hitting triangle, and then bam, bam, bam. So if Lime Ray hadn't been in the way, I would have had Happy face down, and she would have knocked the witch, I guess is what she is, down until Sophedos. So... I had something kind of planned, but whatever. And we did get a cure coin. Did we need this? No, but we got it. So, you know, can't be too upset about free stuff. I think you can sell the coins. I know you can sell the seals. I don't know if I've ever tried, but... Ah, we have... I guess we could call this a cutscene. And listen, guys, new music, hallelujah, and the sound of birds. Well, before we get too entranced with the surroundings, we're going to go ahead and call this an episode. So when we resume in video number nine, we are going to meet this Prius of Cassius named Silphados. And, you know, maybe he'll give us a reward for us offering him our services. I don't know, but we'll have to all stay tuned to find out. So I'll see you guys in our upcoming episode. Thanks for watching. I am your host, Rabbit, and this is my semi-blind run of Hoshigami ruining Blue Earth. Talk to you all soon.